Hey guys, welcome to Algos Explained. My name is David Kim, and we are back at Code Wars, and I'm going to bring you another problem. This is the level 7 question, uh, so one of the easier ones than what I've been uh, putting out. But um, yeah, I just want to mention I'm almost at 100 subscribers, and so if you're watching this and if you're a subscriber, thank you for being a part of that, uh, that 100 that's hopefully gonna happen soon but <clears throat> yeah anyways I decided to change this up a little bit I in the past I've done it where I haven't looked at the problem at all before on my by myself and um, I've also done it where I had the solution on the screen here for you um, and then I just walked through it but what I think uh, I'm, so what I'm gonna try now is I have looked at the problem before I've solved it myself and I'm going through it with you um, at, for a second time or as a second time whatever it is, you get the idea. Instead of having the solution right there or instead of never having seen it before, I've seen the question before now and we are going to walk through it together. And um, it'll help me kind of justify my thought process a little bit better and uh, kind of show you guys where where and when I decide to like create things or create variables, create different functions, different uh, uh, routes to go with, different routes to go on the problem. Um, and yeah, uh, why not a simple one just for starts? And so, okay, this one is called shortest word. We are doing this in JavaScript and we are going to, um, okay, so right here, x simple, given a string of words, return the length of the shortest words. Um, string will never be empty and you will, you do not need to account for different data types. Okay, so that's good. So a string of words. So that's the data structure that's I'm, that I'm going to be working with. S is going to be a string, and so I'm assuming that it's just going to be like a sentence kind of thing, and it definitely is. Um, if you're wondering kind of what does my input look like, there's always going to be sample tests down here for code wars at least. If during like an interview situation you're not sure, um, definitely ask for like a sample uh, example or sample like argument, like kind of what their parameters are going to be, and if they give you like a hard one, then I think you should counter that with like a simpler one of yourself, a simpler one that you made yourself and say, would this also work as a possible argument? Something like that. Like for example, if they, if I asked them for like a possible argument and they gave me, and they gave me this long sentence, I probably would have been like, okay, how about Bitcoin takes over? Would that also work? And if they say yes, then yes, I could now work with a smaller example or smaller argument and kind of, it's always better to work with smaller arguments and then kind of make sure that it works for all cases when you're first making the, making like these answers to these algorithms. But anyways, we know what it's going to look like. It's going to be a string and pretty much um, looks like there's, well, for these examples, there aren't any punctuation marks, but I mean, it could be a possible thing. Um, if it is, probably. It might be something that they tell you later, or it might be something that you want to ask them right off the bat if you kind of understand what that what that's all about. Because say there's a comma after Bitcoin, like that, then does that mean that this is now uh, of length like eight because of the comma, or am I still supposed to supposed to count this as a length of seven? You know, because Bitcoin by itself, I believe that's seven length of seven, but with the comma, it would probably read eight. Um, something like that, just like these edge cases, you might want to kind of, if you predict, go ahead and ask them right away. And if not, maybe at the end of it, if it fails for that edge case or that little, yeah, that edge case scenario, um, be ready to solve, be ready to refactor your answer so that it uh, matches up with, or the, so that it works. But yeah, anyways, we're going to be working with the string that's being given, and we know that there's going to be a space between all these words. There's not going to be any mumbo jumbo Bitcoin takeover without spaces. And so we know that one, what do we need to do? We need to find the length of the shortest word and not the shortest word. They don't want the, they don't want the word itself. They want just the length of it. So that's something that we have to take note of and they want the shortest one within the sentence. And so somehow our basic plan, our basic thought process should be going like, okay, I need to look at all the, all the words. And I need to kind of hold on to what will be the shortest length. And at the end of it, after I compared every single word that I come across to this shortest length that might or might not get updated as I go through the other words, I need to output that. And so pretty much how are we going to kind of 
make sure that we look at every single word. I think the best way to do that is to take this string and turn it into an array because it's very easy to take an array and look at every single element of the array. And we know a great way to do that by doing the split method. And so let's go ahead and call this words array and let's split the S. So, and we're going to split it on the space, which means that we're going to have an array of now all these words. They're going to be in their own element or they're going to be in their own index. And so now we know that we want to look at all of these. So we're going to have to just do a for loop. So let i equal zero, i plus less than words, array dot length, i plus plus. Okay, and so now as we look at all these words, what are we going to do? We're going to not capture the word, but the length of the word. And so we want to have a variable that captures the length that we're probably going to output later. And so let uh, shortest equals, you could do zero, but I mean, that's usually like my default kind of, if I need to set a, a, a variable to a number, it's usually zero, but in this case it's not because we're looking for the smallest. And so no length is going to be smaller than zero because you can't have like a, like a, a black hole of a word. <laughs> it's not going to be negative. And so what we want to do is pretty much the opposite. We want to make it the biggest possible. And instead of doing like some arbitrary huge number, I think the best way to do this is just call out infinity. Whatever, whatever word length that we run into after that is going to be less than infinity for sure. And at the end, we could just infinity. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> we're not going to return infinity. We're going to return shortest, which is going to be kind of what variable we're going to be using within this for loop. And so you might also say, okay, since I have words array, I can just set shortest to be the first length, uh, the length of the first element of the words array. That also works too. Um, what I meant by that was I could also do something like, since we already created the words array over here, we could just do like that. And that would also work. I spelled that wrong. But yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to go with infinity and we are going to um, now have the logic in here. We're going to be looking at every single word in this sentence that we're given and we're going to compare it to our shortest length. And so we are going to do if words array and we're going to be looking at it at each index which means we're going to be looking at every single word and we're not just going to be looking at the word, we're going to be looking at the length. If that is shorter than the shortest, then we need to pretty much update the shortest. So shortest words array of i dot length. And if you wanted to kind of make a variable here, uh, word length, let's do that. Uh, equals words array of i length, then you can go ahead and uh, word len, length. Let's just call it length. And how I'm capturing the same thing here is I'm doing command D on a Mac. Um, probably control D on a PC, but I'm not too sure about that. Um, it also works in Atom too, so that's kind of cool. I know that in Visual Studio you might have to download another package, but <clears throat> I digress. Anyways, uh, this is pretty much it. We Let's do a quick walkthrough of this, I guess. Um, shortest, find short, and we're going to be giving a string string of words like this. And what we're going to do is we know that we're going to have to look at every single word, and we're going to have to kind of hold on to the shortest length. So when we first meet Bitcoin, our length is going to be, our shortest length is going to be seven. And then when we, when we visit take, it's going to be four. When we visit over, it's still going to be four. When we visit the, it's going to be three. And so that's pretty much, uh, we're going to hold on to the length of three, until the end of it, because that's going to be the shortest word we meet. Um, we're going we're gonna to meet three again at who, but it doesn't update because that's not shorter. Um, shortest length would probably be a one for like A or I or something like that. Um, so this is what split is how we're going to create that array of words so that we can easily look at every single word uh, by itself and try to kind of like look at that length data of that word. Um, we're going to set our shortest variable to infinity so that the first time we compare the word length to something, it automatically updates it because the length of Bitcoin, uh, 7, is going to be shorter than infinity. So 
automatically we're going to be working with seven and then compare seven to kind of the length of take, the length of take to over, which is not going to update, the length of four to the, which will update. And we're going to be looking at each of those words with the for loop. We're just uh, initializing it to zero, looking at it until we finish the words array, uh, incrementing the i. We did a little thing here where we didn't want to just call words Reapply our length two times, so we just put it as a variable. As a variable, we called it word length, and so and um, in our logic here, we used if word length is shorter is less than the shortest, which means if the last recorded shortest length is now is no longer the shortest length, we're going to update it, and that's what happens on line ten right in here. Shortest is now updated to word length, which is over here, of course, uh, line eight, and at the end of it all, we're going to return shortest. And so we're going to attempt that. Hopefully it all passes. And what I decided is I'm going to um, I'm going to upload all this or every video. I'm I, you know how I do a problem every video. I'm going to take this solution here and kind of what I've been working with in my own JS file. I'm going to upload it to a re repository on GitHub so that you guys can see it too. And so. Um, I don't know, maybe you want to just run some of these functions on your own uh, desktop. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I feel like having the code more accessible, that'd be kind of cool. So that's what I'm going to start doing. Uh, watch out for that link in the description. Uh, I'm probably not going to announce it every time like I am doing here, but this is going to be pretty much the shortest word algorithm. That's going to be the first one that's going to be in that repo. So hopefully, you know, hopefully that that um, is beneficial to you guys in whatever way. But I appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you uh, enjoyed it, like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the other videos on my playlist. Um, they're not always consistent, but hopefully this new form is going to be kind of working for everybody. And uh, we'll, we'll see where this goes. But um, yeah, uh, have a good one.